So you're making your mask right now? Yeah, I, well, I, I have the picture, but I've, um, I was you thinking of the think words. Right. Huh? Yeah. You were thinking, thinking about the qualities that you wanted to show or not show. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm, you know, I, I try not to use the same words all the time because, yeah. because I make a mask all the time. I want to be like, what's really use right? Use different things. Yeah, well, just what's really present right now. They may be the same, but what are what are some words? But I, I wanted not... to share this to you myself. Like uh, the things that we want to show or not show, it, it's not something that's fixed. It keeps changing from time to time and the situation. That's true. That's exactly right. And it also is like, you know, you and I have known each other, what, how many years? Three years now, right? Uh, uh, 20, 2018? No, yeah. 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the fifth year. Yeah. The, the, well, 2018 was when I was there, right? Yeah. Mom, we are in, yeah, okay. So we are in the fourth year. It's about to... Yeah. yeah so it's... The Mall United Nations. Mall United Nations. That's right. During the monsoon time of... of P I would actually thank the monsoon for giving me that opportunity. If it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have met. Well, pro yeah. It would have been a very different... You would have saw me on stage and... Maybe you wouldn't have come up and said hello. It would have but... been complete strangers. Yeah, that's it. That that would have been the most. I would have just come up to you. We would have spoken something, and yeah, that's it. We wouldn't have had the con. We wouldn't have had the the conversations that we've had for so long for all these four years. Yeah, it went really fast. So, you know, the the experience is wild like that. You know, like um, I think uh, now I get a chance to, and I think that you know the. I have a lot of you know. You know, I have a lot of love for India. Like, I, I lived there. I went yeah. to the, I worked at the school you went to, you used to go to. Um, so, so I think it's a really yeah. interesting. I've seen how you described every particular thing, every small thing. Uh, from the snack that you ate, uh, the shop, from the shop that's opposite to our school, from the places that you wanted to visit in India. Yeah. You describe yeah. everything and everything in, in a very detailed manner. <laughs> I've seen yeah. how, how keen you're about it. I've seen how keen you're about it. Every <laughs> single thing. Never forget egg puffs across the street with the tamarind ah, yeah, sauce. That's, good. that's the best. That's yeah. the best. And I wonder, I remember you saying uh, that you wanted to have a uh, full meals like uh, the ilai virinde we call the you the lunch served on a leaf. It's called a virinde <laughs> feast. You said you wanted to have it the next time you were here, and I, I promised you that I'll I'll make I make I'll make sure that I'll take you to that place. Okay. Where well, you get I'm a great feast. Mm, I'm already I'm already tasting it right now. My mouth is watering. <laughs> well, listen, uh, I'm gonna just we'll start right now and then we'll jump in and then uh you will uh you'll tell us who's gonna go first, all right? Welcome to the Taking Off the Mask Podcast. My name is Ashanti Branch, and I'm really glad you joined us. Today's guest is Pranav Reddy. Uh, Pranav is a student. He just finished his senior secondary school, which is like 12th grade uh, in Chennai, Tamil Nadu, India. Uh, long story about how he and I met, but we talk about it in the episode. We met uh, when I came back to India after so many years of after I did my Fulbright Fellowship. Uh, in, in 2007, I did a Fulbright Fellowship in India. And in 2018, I went back. Uh, I was invited as a chief guest for the Model United Nations event, and uh, the event was canceled. Long story, we talk about it in the podcast episode, but after like the event being canceled, Pranav and I met outside of the school because he had to go back home because there was no school that day. Um, and we started talking, and he made a mask that day four years ago, 2018. And now, 20, four years later, uh, he is a part of this podcast, and I'm really excited. I think, you know, for those of you that know a little bit about my story and my and then this experience of this podcast, you know, um, our first episode was with a young man from Brazil, and it kind of happened by accident. And that conversation was a building block for what we get to do today. And so as we get close to 100 episodes, I'm really excited that Pranav and a young man from India gets to be on the show because it's a big part of my heart and my life. You know, when I lived in India for that eight months, it was life changing, not only teaching math there, but just learning about more of the culture and the community and education and all the things that I had opportunities to learn while being in another place for a long time. It wasn't just like a visit where I was still 
packing out of my my luggage. I was moved in. I was part of the community. The people, my neighbors, said hi and hello. How are you? Like there, there was there was community building there um, in a beautiful place. And this is what we try and do in this podcast: build community and build connection and help people realize that they're not alone. Even in a room full of people, you could feel alone, but it doesn't mean that you are. You can feel a sense of loneliness and no one understands you, no one gets you. And we see that over and over again with young people realizing that maybe they don't think people really care or that people understand them. So they keep all their things to themselves. You know, one of the things that Pranav and I got a chance to do is really have some conversation around this mask. You know, when I taught in India, I, 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 I experienced some of the masks. I, I saw them sometimes. The podcast was nowhere near. We were not, we had not done the mask activity, but I saw so many things that I was, I had questions about, I was wondering about, I was curious about. And I got to learn by asking a lot of these students questions. I, I got to build connection with some of those students who I'm still in touch with today, which is such a beautiful thing. And so I'm hoping that you enjoyed today's episode. If you know somebody, a young person, a young man around the world who you think that we should talk to, please let us know. They don't need to be famous. They don't need to have any special kind of following in the world. But if you know a young man who is willing to share with us about themselves growing up, what it means to feel sometimes around this emotional mask, we would love to have a conversation with them. And we hope that you continue to share this podcast with someone else you know. Maybe it's a parent, maybe it's a teacher, maybe it's a community worker, maybe it's a coach that our young people want to be heard. They oftentimes just don't know the words that adults will listen to. Uh, and it's important that they hear more, definitely adults, that they hear more than just, I'm fine, I'm good, I'm cool, I'm I. Right. Those are important, but there's definitely more to each of them than we can see on the outside. So we hope you will like, subscribe, share this podcast with somebody. We hope that you will tell someone about it. We think that these conversations are going to be powerful for you if you interact with men, boys in the world at all. Because if we don't know that our men and boys, we feel full. We feel all the full gamut of emotions. But we've been taught that some are accepted and some are not. And therefore, the ones that are not accepted, we've learned to stuff them, put them away, put a mask on them. And I think those are the things that cause us to find challenge so much because we're trying to be human fully, but yet we're only able to be part of our true selves. Thank you for being a part of this podcast. You can make your mask at millionmask.org anonymously. Uh, we share our mask here publicly, but you can share your mask anonymously. We thank you for being a part of this journey. Take care, everybody. Hey, Pranav, welcome to the Taking Off the Mask podcast. It is very good to see you. Thank you, sir. It's, been, it's my honor. I've been waiting for a long time for this opportunity. Well, listen, um, I would like you to introduce yourself, tell folks who are you, maybe whatever you want them to know about you before we jump into these masks. Yeah, sure. Uh, so my name is Pranav Reddy. Uh, I'm a student who just finished uh, his grade 12 right now, and we're waiting for our results. I'm yet to join college. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Yeah. I'm from Chennai, by the way, uh, a state in Tamil Nadu, uh, a city in, in Tamil Nadu, and uh, it's a state of India. Awesome. Well, you know, I am really glad to have you with us. And I think people who have listened to the show before may know this, but if you're new listening to the show, I had the opportunity to live in Chennai. Um, whoa. Now, my. <laughs> actually, actually that's pretty pretty interesting right you, as you can imagine like I, I was talking about living in, in, in india um there were some times that i felt like alarms were going off in my in my brain living there right like a lot of noise a lot of a lot of honking horns a lot of autos yeah, like so actually it's very telling i mean it almost sounds like an auto rickshaw honking their horn at you yeah that is the feelings that you were from from your when from when you were back here it was it was um so we get a chance to have this conversation and um um pranav and i met i went i got invited to the model united nations event um to speak as one of the they call him the chief guest <laughs> the valedictorian 
you yeah. were supposed to be the valedictorian. Yeah, see, valedictorian means something different to us here. What does valedictorian mean in the context there? Uh, it's generally, it's uh, you you were referred to as a chief guest, but uh, we refer to them as the one who gives a speech. Uh, uh, like uh, at the at the end of every year, uh, there'll be a topper, right? Uh, like throughout all the sections, there'll be one particular student who tops the rank. Uh, he or she will be given a chance to speak in front of everybody uh, at the end of the day or at the graduation day. Maybe so. When events take place at uh, when sm when small events like these are being hosted by our school or by any school over here, we call a valedictorian or, or a chief guest. Okay, so I was gonna be the valedictorian uh, in that context, and I was excited. And um, and I get um, I was in Delhi at first, and then we came down. We drove down to Chennai, and then I was there. And all of a sudden we get to the school that morning and they were like, school is closed. I'm like, no, it can't be closed. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm speaking. I'm the, I'm the chief guest. What are you talking about? You can't close. You can't close. He's like, no, it's monsoon weather. You see this, see this like closed school closed. And I'm like, how's that possible? I came from so many thousands of miles away. And in uh, fact, it wasn't monsoon either. You yeah. can't expect the weather over here. It wasn't monsoon as well. The time when you came. Yeah. And they, I was like, they, no one called me and told me they were closing the school. They said, yep. All the, all the and students were still arriving because most students didn't get the call, right? Yeah. So we actually didn't... get a notification from the school. Uh, and I left early. My house is a bit far from school, so I had to leave early. By the time I left, uh, it seems my mom had got a message. So I thought we already left. Why, why do we not check the school and then get back? So by the time we reached there, uh, we reached the school. I could see that uh, they had postponed uh, the MUN um, to the next week. Uh, so I, I was planning on returning and that was the time I met you. Yeah. And I was, and I'd already like talked to one or two people. The security guard was being really like forceful, you know, how they get right. They're taking yeah. their job really serious. And I was like, what's going on here? And so then you came up and I was like, Hey, it's closed. And we had this exchange right there in front of your school. Um, and you were like, what? Like it, it, it's over. I'm like, yeah. I and then I asked you to, make a mask i said hey i was like i'm gonna make it i'm gonna take advantage of this time i'm here i'm gonna ask some students yeah. in front of the school to make a mask and uh and you made a mask yeah yeah i did and that was four years right ago. in front of the gate uh we we still weren't inside the school we were just waiting at the security guard stable i i i think you still have those videos i still have those videos with me we're, gonna, we're gonna... recording everything that's right we're gonna show them we're gonna show them because i think that that's a huge uh journey of this story you were in the ninth standard right you were yeah i was a ninth and you were i think what country were you representing in the model united nations i was i was representing norway norway so you came i don't i don't remember the exact committee i was representing it in but yeah i remember the country and he was dressed he was dressed in his gear his not uniform he was dressed up ready to go and it all changed you know and that was a day that we met right there and then miss ranjani ma'am came and she got us into one of the rooms to talk and chat. And um, the uh, one of the men from the delegation was also there. And then yeah. uh, oh, actually, um, Deepak came later as well. He, he yeah, came two back to friend, two other of your friends came. Yeah, they came back to pick us up because the driver had dropped us off at the school and left. And then we were like, what are we going to do? We were stuck here and uh, it all worked out really beautifully. So first of all, I want to thank you for these. Uh, this connection over four years has been a fast four years, you know? Yeah, it's been really fast four years. And you've and grown up. It just went to the blink of an eye. You've grown up a lot. Yeah. Yeah, lots of I experience, did. lots of life. And so today we get to come back together. And I can see all your hair turning white since I was growing up. I know, <laughs> man. The Look first time that. I met you, you had none. You did not have a single white hair, but now... I can Man. see a few. I can see the a few. years, a year. Well, I used to, I used to be enough to just pull one or two out. You know, that's easy okay. when you get one or two. But when you have, yeah, it's, well, like salt, it's not possible. Yeah, it's like salt and pepper, it's like salt and pepper right there. Well, listen. Uh, four years later, we get to come together and make masks. And I think at some point we had talked about you making masks with your peers. And I'm not sure what happened yeah, with that situation. Um, and then now we are going to this next phase of your life right and uh i'm excited that you're really willing to be on the show i'm glad to have you're our first guest from from india um and i'm like oh. how did that happen 
And so we're, you know, we're approaching episode 100. So it's really exciting to be back connected and, uh, and to have you on the show. I think um, to our episode, our goal of this podcast is having young people, older people of all ages. So uh, are you ready? Yeah, of course I am. All right. So you get to decide who goes first. Either I, you, you want me to go first or you okay, want I'll to go, go first. first. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Or shall I show my, my, yeah, just, my front side just, of the mask? Just, yeah, just the front side. Yeah. All right, you want to tell us about it? You want to tell us what it says and then tell us about uh, it? See. Okay, uh, as I was telling earlier, um, these are not things that are permanent. Uh, these are not the things that I always want to show. Or at different points of time, there are different things or uh, new qualities that I learn or that I experience or that I go through. Uh, it, uh, I would call it a phase of life, a part of uh, what's a phase. It, I would call it a certain period for a very short period of time uh yeah so at this point i've been going a little easy going uh in uh, in the fast past few situations uh there, there has been some complicated stuff but i still just don't care much about it i know when to avoid i know when to be uh assertive about some things so yeah i've been i've been easy going off late and then caring uh caring is something uh that i don't want to show like just now uh, this is something that i try to show to everyone at at all the times in every situation possible every possible situation i'd like to show how caring i am uh, it's not like i want to show uh, that's the way i am i like people to see how caring i am and then happy yeah uh, again uh, it depends on the situation uh, since we have no other pressures right now like academics or anything we're just waiting for our results uh, every on our college proce uh, proceedings can only start after the results are up uh, and so, yeah, since we have no other uh, commitments or no other work jobs that is to be done, we, we're just still happy roaming around, not knowing what to do, just keeping ourselves occupied. All right. All right. Well, they're going to see some probably things in, uh, in common here. So thank you for sharing the front of your mask. I appreciate that. Um, okay, here we go. So, oh, so this is the mask I drew. Okay, and one eye. Here are the words I wrote. So dedicated, dedicated determined, 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 and and caring. And the caring one that also. we have in cover. That's right. Um, yeah, I think dedicated and determined. I think um, I've been working on this thought process of like all the things that have helped me to not only achieve or arrive here today, um, but just thinking about the daily grind of like doing this work, right? Like not only not the podcast work, but the ever forward work, but the, my personal work, like um, to be dedicated. Uh, and it's something that I'm, I'm really, I, I think I want people to know that I'm dedicated. Like I'm, I'm, I'm an hour hard worker and I am like committed and pushing through even challenges, you know, um, determined, like there's been times where, you're like, oh, okay, why, do I, why am I doing this still? Why am I doing these things, right? And I think I've come to a place of um, of saying, you know what, I'm determined to achieve. I don't know what the long-term goal for the podcast is, but I'm determined to keep it going until something else says don't, right? I'm, I'm determined to keep serving young people in my community until something else changes. And so I think, you know, I may not know the, fi the, the finish line, the finish line is like solving this problem, right? How do we solve these problems in our communities? But it's a big problem to solve. So I'm determined to keep on the mission field, you know, and then caring, you know, like you said, um, I think um, I'm often very caring, but sometimes I'm really tough. And for right? the people who know, for the people who know you, I don't think there's an explanation for that. You are caring a lot. You, you, you're all years when they need you. And yeah, so the, for the people who already know you very well, uh, you don't, you actually don't have to give them an explanation why you're caring. Mm. that would just do it i think that the tricky part is people who don't right because i'm i'm a big guy right because i'm like really serious a lot and i'm like trying to get stuff done so people can mistake that for aggressiveness or or they can mistake yeah. it for you know too much intensity but it comes from a place of caring i don't always i don't think people will see caring when they first meet me maybe they may see caring when they first meet me but i think because I'm like trying to always get stuff done. I'm always moving fast, right? Sometimes people think yeah. that that's not slowing down enough. And that's so, not just you. The whole world is just in a maze right now. They're just running around doing all this stuff. Mm. It's not just you who's trying to get work done. Are you running around a lot too? 
uh, not for uh, work stuff probably, but I am just running around a bit. Mm, yeah. All right. Well, that's the front. And now. So shall we go to the back? Are you ready for this part? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, of course. All right. Here we go. Hmm. Yeah, thank you. You want to read it to us and tell us what it is? Read it to us. Yeah, so the first one is not expressive. And then uh, low self-esteem. And then uh, the third thing is I'm avoidant. Okay, so talking about the non-not expressive. Um, it's not that I don't expre express stuff. Uh, it's just that I keep few sensitive issues with myself, not issues, a uh, few feelings with myself. Uh, I know that I see, uh, but th that those uh, ex those expressions are like absolutely necessary necessary for me to express. Like I have to express those feelings, uh, but due to some reason, I feel that uh, maybe it'll affect someone in some other way, uh, and I just keep it with myself without expressing. Uh, I know it's the right thing, right thing to do, but I still just back off from expressing it. Uh, like I, if uh, at some times, uh, at some point of time, I just feel pressure. Uh, I just feel pressure pressurized about this, and, and not about not just about this. Uh, many, any, many, many of the stuff. So one day, uh, I had actually called you regarding my exam pressure, uh, and I was talking. We were, you were helping me out with that. So what happened was, uh, I, I, I just have a few burst outs like that. Uh, but then I generally don't do it. Uh, there are very rare cases where I do that. Uh, I don't do it unless and until I feel uh, it's absolutely necessary. Uh, so yeah, uh, that I had to do it that day so that I could concentrate on my studies further. I I couldn't just keep ranting about it all day, and I just needed to move forward with it. That's the reason I had called you that day. Uh, and yeah, uh, so that's it. I'm not expressive about few things. Um, I I keep it with my I keep it with myself. I don't know why I do that, but I feel it's for the best. And the next one, low self-esteem. Yeah, uh, yeah. Again, not about everything. Uh, about a few things. Uh, I like I like to learn a lot of things. I like to, I can learn anything. Uh, so, but when I'm on my way of learning things, uh, I might not get it at the first time or the second time. I, it takes time for people to learn. Uh, at one point of time, I start losing my confidence. Uh, I I start to get feeling saying that that I I might not be able to do it. It's not that I won't do it. I might not be able to do it. I start second guessing my decisions. Uh, and yeah, again, I don't know why I do that, but still, that is a part of my back, by my backside. So I just don't want people to see that. And then avoidant. Um, as I told you about easygoing on from my friend's side, uh, when there are a few complicated situations uh, that I have to solve or uh, that I have to go through, uh, I know it's the right thing to go through, but I just avoid it. I I don't want to uh, take care of it at this point of time right now. Uh, I, I, I always think that there'll be a, some particular point of time, uh, there'll be some point or some time where uh, it fits perfect so that I have to go through it. And I don't go to it. I just avoid it until that particular time comes. Yeah, these are the yeah. Same things. Thank you, man. Yeah, I, I felt I felt that. I felt that. Uh, I definitely felt, oh, well, you'll see right now which one... Uh, we have in common here so here we go this is the back this is the back so i wrote uh okay self-doubt self-doubt fear of failure fear of, uh, and family drama family okay drama. so self-doubt i think is also connected to like self-esteem right like the believing yeah. that i yeah. can do it i can do it i will do it and i think um as I've been moving into this next phase of my life, right? Like everything I've done so far is like, wow. Like, and then I'm like, but I want to be way over there. And it almost seems like it's, it's hard to really accept that I've achieved right here because I'm still trying to get there. So I think sometimes I don't acknowledge how far I've already come because I'm always kind of looking to the next thing. I think I have to learn how to just appreciate okay. what you've done. Exactly, exactly. And I think that I'm really good about helping young people uh, do that. I think I'm trying to remember the call. We've had lots of calls over the last four years, but I'm trying to remember the call in particular that you're talking about. But what I'm always trying to do is help them see like, this too, this storm, this chaos, it will pass. You're going to get through this. 
we've gotten through other things and I don't do always do good about having that same pep talk for myself. Like I can have a pep talk with you much easier than I can have a pep talk with me. Right. And so I think part of the work is Shanti, listen, this is a tough moment. You're going to get through this and keep moving, you know? Um, so that, and I think that one connects to the fear of failure because I really want to succeed. I really want this. See what's next. I, well, I really want this to work. Right. I mean, the next is I want, I want to achieve that next thing. Right. But also fear that what happens if I don't like what, because I think sometimes my work is so c- connected to me. Right. And so if, if I fail, if my work fails, then I can feel like a failure. And it's not the truth. It's just a story that I tell myself. So the fear I'm constantly having to like, look, if, 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 if something happens and I go get a job, is that the end of the world? No, but, but I, but I get a chance to say, okay, what am I, what am I learning from all the lessons of things that mess up, right? Every little moment that things that don't go the way I want them, it doesn't mean that I'm a failure. It just means that there's a new path you got to, you know, etch out for yourself, you know? That's right. And then family drama. Um, yeah, I'm dealing with, yeah, you know, drama comes in so many different ways, but just right now dealing with some stuff with my cousins and my grandmother. And to be specific, uh, the thing that I've been avoidant about is uh, uh, our family dramas as well. Mm. Why, why, why do you avoid them? I don't see, I don't, I don't think it fits right to just at some point, I don't think I, I I don't think it fits right to just getting into every single thing, it, like just digging deep into every single thing. That's not how things work. Uh, when you can understand something, you just have to leave it casually. You don't have to dwell upon things. You don't have to like uh, you, you don't have to be hung up on stuff. You can just move forward with something just happens. Yeah. Uh, so I I just I just avoid those kinds of things. Uh, I would have I could have actually told I could have been more casual about it. But I feel I've been avoidant about it. That's why I just uh, put it on the backside of my mask. Yeah. I think you and I talked about this a while back. I think um, um, if I remember right, just in terms of uh, I'd asked you, uh, you had mentioned, I think, uh, one of your uncles or somebody uh, passing, right? Someone um, in your family. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, how do you navigate that? And he says, uh, what I remember you saying to me was, um, Oh, you know, this that person wouldn't want us to be here sad for them. So we just we just we just kind of get happy, right? We just we yeah. I forgot how you described it's it. Not remember- you're, it's not that you're happy. Uh mm. it's just that you're not sad. You, you, even if you try to be happy, it's not possible for you to ha- you to be happy. You can't be happy. Uh, at some point, uh, at some corner of your mind, uh, you'll find them. You'll you'll miss them. You'll you'll obviously feel. Uh, you'll obviously be grieving for them. But then they won't want us to be happy once they've left. Uh, they don't want them to. Be, they, they nobody will be want them. Okay, so if I'm leaving a place, I don't want to leave with. Uh, I, I I wouldn't want to leave with people. Uh, t- with, with people with tears in their eyes or I don't want them to be sad when I leave. I want all of them to be happy and cheerful when I leave. Uh, I just want them to be positive. I don't, I don't, I don't want to be the reason uh, that they are sad or uh, they're not happy. Mm-hmm. So what we try to do is we, we don't, we try not to be sad. It's not that we are happy again. Mm-hmm. That is, that, I mean, I think that's a, a beautiful description of it. I, it took me a while to take it in. I think it took me a while to take it in because then when you described that, I was really curious. Like, how do you? Yeah, I don't want them to. Be, I don't want to be the reason that they are sad. So it's not that you're happy; it's just that you're not sad. Yeah, mm, exactly. Yeah, I think sometimes it, it takes. It's a, a bit complicated, but you still once you understand it, you you actually know how what it means. Mm. It's a bit complicated. You just have to break it down a bit, and then if once it gets simple, it gets simple. Uh, you know how it feels. You'll actually feel happy about it being simple. Yeah. I, mean, I think that when I think about that, like, you know, when my grandmother passed in 2020, um, it was really tough. It was really tough, right? And I know my grandmother. I know no matter what was going on, she was always trying to keep, uh, no matter what kind of chaos was happening, she was always trying to keep the peace and always trying to keep people to not focus on the negative, right? And I think, um, even when I was like frustrated about stuff that was happening, she was like, 
it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. And I'm like, no, they can't do this. <laughs> and she'd be like, I, I'm like, what do you, what do you mean? What do you mean? Why are you taking this so lightly? You know? And I think, you know, I ultimately uh, realized when I, when you describe that ability to kind of just not get sucked into the sadness, I think we talk about the mask too, right? Like I yeah. feel grief. How do you feel grief without feeling sadness? And I don't know. I wonder if that's possible. Um, maybe it's some different kind of context about death. Yeah, so, uh, and about to make grief. it more simple, uh, again, uh, we are having our masks on here. Mm -hmm. We are sad, but we just we still uh, appear like we just present ourselves uh, saying that we're not sad. Mm. Again, not happy. We just present ourselves being not sad. Yeah. yeah. We do have our masks on again. That's interesting. Now, and I wonder based on you and your peers, like, you know, you and your age group. So you just finished high school, what they call high school, yeah. senior, senior secondary school there, right? Yeah. Yes. Finished high school. How, how have you experienced, because you made a mask four years ago. How have you experienced people? I've made a lot. I've made a lot. Then I've made a lot more than four. Oh yeah. All right. Well, what, what have you experienced in young people in masks in your community, in your city or, in the ones you connect with yeah again uh, it it uh, i can't just narrow down to anything any single thing in particular uh, mm. there are so many masks that i've collected that i've viewed uh, that i've reviewed i just wanted to know i was curious about how how pe how different people's minds work so i just i i i, I went through a few uh, i found okay so the person that i saw and uh, the uh, on the kind of kinds of thoughts that he had or the abilities or the qualities that he wanted to show and what and which he didn't want to show it like it was absolutely not at all uh, not at all related uh, as you told uh, when people see you at first they think that you're a bit aggressive and you're not caring but once we get to know you we can see that how, how we can see how caring you are uh, how understanding you are how patient you are uh, yeah and like that I I did see a lot of things like that uh, well, going through uh, many of those masks. Mm. And so, for you, how do you like now? As you're, you're older now, you're become about to be a college student. Like, do you have friends that you can talk to about stuff? Yeah, of course I do. There are, and I'm happy about it. And you are one of it. Mm. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You know, I, I think that one of the questions I, I ask as we close, as we think about, you know, wrapping this up is like, what do you think that we could do for people? Imagine, so as you have friends you can go to and talk to when things are pressurizing you, right? When you have yeah. people you can talk to as for an outlet to let some of that energy out. What about people who don't have somebody to go to? What, what do we need to, what do you think we need to do in your community to make it more possible for people to let go of some of that pressure that causes them so much stress and worry and doubt. I would actually say that uh, a lot of people have, uh, with, like you, uh, people should start doing things what you are doing exactly, the exact things what you are doing. You're trying to help uh, the society by ask, by just asking their queries or by just hearing them out, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and in India, for those therapy sessions or counseling, whatever you call it. Uh, people's uh, people are paying uh, thousands and thousands for it, or even or sometimes even lakhs for it. Um, I I think not putting a price on it maybe will help a lot of people. Uh, free counseling camps or something like that could be set up. Uh, just, uh, just people who can hear around, like who can hear whatever the other person wants to rant or whatever he wants to blame someone or about. Or if, if people who can hear patiently are available, it'll be better. Mm. Even though, uh, actually, uh, 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 what I think is that uh, if a person uh, is suffering from something, not just uh, a mental issue or not, uh, or some mental trauma, or he's been going through something uh, lately, yeah, uh, he or she might not have a person who can listen to what he's saying. He might not be able to share it with uh, so many people. Uh, what uh, what they will feel is that. Uh, they they actually don't want an advice from an ex. They might not need an advice from another person. All they would like is someone to hear what they want to say. Mm. Uh, that will get the the burden of them. Uh, just expressing themselves uh, would be the best cure for them. 
they they would uh, 90% of uh, of the people who i i have seen uh, they don't want an advice on something uh, they just want to rant about something and then they uh, and and then they're done that's it they don't they don't think about it anymore just they just try to move forward with it people can start listening uh, they don't have to think about it or they they don't have to give them advice or uh, and they don't have to be experienced about it or something all they can do is just listen patiently and just give them some support like moral support saying that i i'm here you can always come to me you can always rely upon me for something yeah moral support basically mm this is this is exciting i mean and you and you're a commerce student so you're thinking about business right like if you started a business like this i mean you got to you got to keep the business going right so it may not have to be a lot of expense but it has to cost something right it has to or you can make some donations and people can donate for people who have no money right but what 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 if we create something like that what if we what if we create it like uh i mean this idea of this mask is a way for people to kind of in an, an anonymous way to kind of rant about what's going on what's happening behind there right what if we were to create something what if we would create like a a rant box right and people walk up to the rant box and they're just like they pick up a, a phone it's not really connected to anything or maybe it's a person there and they're like man and blah blah blah, blah and they just like rant and they're like okay yeah yep, i'm done and then they hang the phone up and they walk away right yeah we could actually do that that would be a very big business idea but then i wouldn't do it for money or something if it helps a lot of people uh, or they like mental health uh, i would surely do it not for free for free of cost of course yeah well, i mean about I, i agree i mean i think that's i would love to do that too but how do you how do you pay for how do you pay for your your time and the people on the phones time and i mean or maybe it's a volunteer effort right maybe it's a it's a movement yeah, that's yeah uh, it's just like what you're doing you're just running a social welfare club uh, people who are interested can volunteer it's not that you have to do it it's not uh, uh, okay to be honest this is not going to uh, this doesn't work in a world where you play with money or uh, where you uh, it's not uh, what you it, it's not something that you give and you get back if you're just trying to give something uh, you you're in it uh, otherwise you want you can't you can't expect anything back from it mm-hmm. uh, you can you can give your services you can uh, you can try to help people out uh, but then again you can't expect some you can't expect them to pay you back for by in in terms of money or something else it's just a one way street it's not going to be a two way street and people who are up for it who are willing for it and whoever have the time whoever has the time uh would very much like to be a part of this kind of stuff yeah that's a it's a beautiful i mean i, I as a person who runs a ngo you know i realize in order for these lights to be working <laughs> we have to bring in money from somewhere right so it may not be from the person who needs the help yeah. but it has to come from somewhere unfortunately the world we live yeah. in that commerce is yeah, runs it all it right and so i think it's that yeah. beautiful place of like how do we find enough people to contribute that allows the people who need the services to receive yeah, again, contributions and donations are do matter uh, people who are generous enough uh, uh, who think that uh, the money that they are giving us will be useful to some person or the other Yeah. uh contributions like that will be very much helpful for them yeah again yeah. contributions could and donations can be the way for us can be the solution for this well i mean that's what the million mask movement has been about right how do we grow yeah. this movement to help more people so that they don't feel that sense of overwhelm and pressure you know and i guess maybe the one last thought i would ask for you i would ask you is how have you seen young people in chennai and in india it's like is a whole country How have you seen them navigate pressure? What like what do they do? What do you what do you see young people do when they don't have a place to let go of some of that pressure? What what are, what are they doing? Okay, uh, but to be honest, uh, there are uh, people uh, the mentality of the youngsters, uh, the students of this generation are actually changed. They have a lot of exposure than the ones we had and the ones our parents had, the earlier generations had. uh no mental health issues and mental support moral support is being a uh, very big uh, p- there are, there are so many uh, lectures and so many um what do you call uh, so many exposure there are so many um, informational pamphlets and everything that's going around uh, mm-hmm. people are aware of it uh, p- uh but sometimes people uh, who don't think like sharing uh, who oh, there are some people who do, who think that sharing uh, sharing this stuff is not the way is not a solution for their problems they get involved mm. in some uh, some unwanted exposures like uh, alcohols and stuff uh, 
uh, but then yeah again that that might be the way for a few but i personally don't think that is the way uh yeah again as i told listening uh people who would like to listen to the other person's problem that would be the best solution for it uh and nowadays the moral support from the students uh uh to their everyone's moral support is being actually has actually been improved the one the, the current generation uh ha- they have the sense that uh helping someone out uh morally or giving them mental strength uh not just it, it doesn't just help them it also helps them have a good relationship with that particular person mm. it develops the relationship between that person they get to know what kind of person he or she is uh, they get to know them even more uh, which just uh, makes their relationship uh, stronger so at least for that very particular reason uh, the, the youngsters do provide uh, moral support to their friends and i've seen it in many cases many 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 cases i've seen it i've i i, I know who, who i know a few friends uh, who have been through this and i know who've been supportive for them so yeah uh, the the exposure matters again uh, the current generation do have a lot of exposure to social media to all the, the all the other problems and then yeah they are figuring ways uh, so many there are so many ways in which they are doing it yeah but they are for sure figuring ways to help these kinds of people mm. how did you yeah thank you thank you for that i was, I was well i think let me go ahead and ask a question because it's interesting um how did you come to a place of feeling like it's you know there's people who don't think that talking about it helps and some people who think that sometimes it's important to let it out how did you how did you gain that type of outlook on life do you know where that came from yeah actually yeah i just i've, I've maybe i have experienced it but not serious mental health issues or something i wouldn't just call i i would have been, there would have been some small problems like the exam pressures and so very very small things those are the most pettiest things that people can ever talk about uh but then uh, yeah since i've uh, i've had help from so many people who've helped me like come through it uh uh i feel, uh, yeah uh, by exp- by experiencing it again uh just because i've experienced it i can actually i can actually say this is better this mode of taking help is better than any the wrong exposure or things mm. like that so so from your fr- i mean your friend group like if you see somebody going through something are you the person that people go talk to or they do they come yeah, talk to I, you yeah, yeah. Uh, not not to everyone but uh, yeah. there are a few friends who do come to me yeah right on oh man yeah. anything else you think that you want to say before we wrap this up you know i'm i'm really thankful for you i'm really excited for you in this next journey of your of your life and I'm excited for people to to see that first meeting where we met right there in the rain or oh, it wasn't raining it was kind of just sprinkling a little bit but yeah um <laughs> it was, it was you know, <laughs> and these four years of 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 the adventure right and and now seeing you getting ready to go off to college i'm really happy for you and i'm really proud of you so um thank you so much anything anything else you want to say anything you want to say to, to young people around the world you know like we want this movement to grow and i think i want it to grow in india as well and so um is there any a message you want to say to young people in in India and young people around the world around these masks it's not that i i want to say something uh we have to give things time actually uh it's just th- something that i have felt or i have learned we have to give things time before like jumping into conclusions or anything so we have to give time we have to like evaluate all all the all the ways in which we can handle this and we then have to choose which one is better which method of handling this is better so you need a lot of patience and you have to give things time before you just jump into conclusions or anything again say, it's not something that i want to say it's something that i've learned say 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 a little bit more when when you say jumping to conclusions what do you mean like jumping to conclusions about there, what uh, there are so many decisions that uh, that are to be made at this point of time uh, for students about their college about what they want at which course they want to take in their high school uh, in india say their science or commerce uh, and there are so many subcategories in that uh, yeah so on on small things like that we just don't have to jump into conclusions on how good we maintain a rapport with our friend uh, on how to move forward with the relationship and uh, and all the things like that uh, we just don't have to jump into conclusions we have to give things time mm. you have to just take a pause from everything uh, and then uh, just like we had spoken on the phone the other day 
uh, everything everything around us and they are just in a hustling and bustling mode so all of them have to just take a break just take a pause for 10 seconds like without any noise and without any disturbance and then think about what we're actually doing and then take mm. this yeah you know and and i think that that opportunity for us to like take those moments of just being really present right like take yeah. a breath like uh, like what am i really feeling right now what am i experiencing do i want to yell back at this person or do i want to just be like maybe they're having a like do, how do i want to respond in a way if i'm feeling overwhelmed or like pressure? what do you, uh, it'll, it'll be like uh, what is the use of yelling, yelling at them uh, and things like that you you just don't you might want to yell at a person sometimes but then again uh, for instance uh, you you don't know where it ends right yeah 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 you know i think it's important to know like to cuz sometimes we act out of emotion as opposed to being really rational like our emotions are you know moving fast and they're quick and they're and then we're like hmm this person is yelling at me or they're just seem like they're having a moment and maybe i do need to respond and say hey <laughs> or maybe i need to take a moment and say hmm okay yeah this i'm done with this conversation right and be able to take a step back right and i think those are all pieces you know um pranav i am very proud of you man i thank you for being on the show I'm glad we uh, we have you on the show before we hit episode 100. And, um, you know, I don't know what the next 100 episodes is going to look like, but if you, you know, think of anyone in your community who you think I should, who should be on the show, please introduce them to us. And um, yeah, sure. I hope all billion people in India will listen to your episode, right? Let's hope for it. Let's hope for it, right? Let's hope for it. But if nothing else, I hope that uh, the people who listen are able to see how much you, growth can happen and how much connections are not like stuck in our own little cities and our own little countries and our own little continents but connections can happen globally if we're open to them you know so yeah. thank you for being open to this connection um from the monsoon weather in chennai tamil nadu india at the old school psbb it's so glad to have you on the show thank you so much that's my honor all right Well, folks, look, you can make a mask anonymously at millionmask.org. Pranav and I, we shared our mask here publicly. And, you know, the mask will evolve. Maybe you made one five years ago. And maybe today you get to go into that site and make one and, and, and virtually. Um, and I hope that the people around you know that, that, that you, when you answer how you're doing, that maybe they know you're really telling the truth, that you're doing well or you're doing fine or whatever you're doing that you're willing to share with them. And so hopefully you have somebody like that in your life. And as we are excited about this movement growing, uh, about to hit episode 100, uh, we're excited for you being a part of this journey with us. So thank you again, Pranav. We'll see you real soon. And uh, thank you everybody for being a part. Taking Off The Mask podcast is produced by Ryan Louie. Editing, videography is also by Ryan Louie. Graphics by Kelly Wong. And a special thanks to the team at Ever Forward, Vanessa Cortez and Kevin Romero. And I'd like to thank everyone who's been a part of the creation of this podcast. As we hit this one-year anniversary, we hope that everyone who's been a part knows that they're a part of the Taking Off The Mask experience. And we look forward to you being a part of it as well. If you liked what you heard today, please like, subscribe, and share. And we look forward to us continuing to offer conversations that matter. Take care. See you soon.